You're listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson, the podcast that tells you what it really takes to build a business and the simple steps to get you there. I'm determined to share with you the reality of easy, simple business marketing tips to make passive income so that you can start making money online. Making Money Online is sponsored by Nicola J. Rowley PR, helping entrepreneurs and brands get visible through strategic storytelling. If you're serious about being seen and impacting the lives of others, harnessing the power of PR is the best way to grow and scale your business. Visit njrpr.com for more details and read Nicola's best-selling book, The Power of PR. Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. I've got a really interesting conversation for you today, which I think you're going to like, especially if you're thinking more on how you're going to diversify your income streams and also how you can really add in some more long-lasting money into your business using tech. So I am here with Charlotte Fuller. So Charlotte helps female CEOs and founders build money-making tech solutions and feel confident in doing it. Because I think a lot of the time we hear about SaaS platforms and tech platforms, but it's generally, if we're honest about it, men. Who are, who are doing them, who are building them, who are selling them. And um, we need more women in this space. So Charlotte, why, first of all, why are you concentrating on female founders and CEOs? Yeah, hi, Lisa. So first of all, it's really cool to be here. I'm absolutely excited to have this conversation with you. So the reason why I primarily focus on female founders and, and CEOs, specifically in tech, is that one, there's, there's not a lot of other people out there supporting us. <laughs> and secondly, because I, so my background, I am um, a technology strategy consultant by trade, have been for, for some years now. I come from a, a corporate Accenture Microsoft background before setting up my myself as an independent consultant. And um, back when I was working in corporate, you know, I, I absolutely loved it. I really, really did. I loved working with the clients. I loved solutioning with them, doing all that good stuff. But it was a very, very male dominated environment. You know, when I was joining these teams, there were no other women at all. And um, that became quite overwhelming and all consuming, actually, at a point. And I ended up leaving corporate because I experienced a very severe um, burnout physically and emotionally and had to essentially take time out of work to reevaluate what was important, what happened, how I would not let this happen to me ever again, but also as well to make sure that this never happened to other women in tech and in the industry. And so I spent some time essentially just figuring out what went wrong and then also started to move into a space where one, I, I you know, changed my lifestyle and how I was working. So I travel nomadically throughout the world now and have done for a couple of years. Uh, full time. But I also, what I really wanted to do was make sure that other women felt felt confident in tech and in that space as well. And it really, you know, is the driver for everything that I do now. Let's go back to the burnout that you were feeling in, and, and I found it really interesting, you said emotionally, not just physically, because we talk yeah. about physical burnout all the time. Emotional burnout, what does that look like and why do you think that happened now that you've reviewed yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. So what it looks like or what it looked like for me was that, quite frankly, like my mind just stopped working <laughs> for a while. And um, I found myself actually, you know, I was about to, it really came to a head for me. I was literally about to deliver a strategy piece, the final strategy piece for um, the Irish Parliament on some work that we were doing. And I was in the car with uh, my coworker, and I just turned to him and I said my mind's not working I don't something's not right here and thankfully this guy was incredible you know and he he was like it's okay don't worry about it we'll get through this half an hour and then we'll figure it out and um and from there it kind of that was on and off you know luckily you know i i had a, a support network around me and i was able to take time out but essentially like my brain stopped working effectively yeah. um which is no good for anyone of course 
And so after taking some time out, what I realized was that there was a couple of different sides to this. The first side was, of course, there was an environmental element to it. The, um, the workplace culture, where I was at the time, although I always say, you know, the people that were there, honestly, were were good people. Yeah, I, I really, really liked them. But the culture that we had was just not conducive to, to a healthy environment. And so there was that side of it, the environmental side of it. It was quite getting to a point where it's a little bit toxic and we were driving all of the time for results. And um, and that was the only thing that really mattered. And that pressure, that can that can do damage, that kind of pressure when it's constantly on at you because you never really, your nervous system never really relaxes. Mm-mm. Exactly, exactly. So you, your nervous system, my nervous system was heightened the whole time. And the thing was, I loved being like, I'm a, I'm a classic A type personality, right? Uh, so driving results and getting things done is what I love to do, right? So that's why there's two sides to this because one side is environmental, the other side is, well, what could I have done to protect myself in that environment and to take care of myself? Because we always have to look, I think, at what we are not doing right as well, and we can't put the blame on on everyone else all the time. And so what I realized essentially was that Firstly, I wasn't taking care of myself as well as I could have been um, in terms of my health and, and self-care. But also as well, there was a confidence element to it. I, if you'd have looked at me from the outside, you would have 100% said that I was a confident person. But underneath it all, I wasn't. You know, I, I wasn't able to set boundaries. I wasn't able to stand up for what I needed. And I had to learn how to do that. Do you think that's because you were a female in a male-dominated environment? I think it's got a large part to do with it. Yeah, I think, you know, I came in, like I said, there were were no other women there at the time. When I first came into this department, there were afterwards. And so you naturally conform to what is around you if you don't know any better. Um, And so, yeah, I think it had a large part to do with it. I think a lot of the time, I remember being in corporate myself and, and my CEO was a woman. And I think that women often have to do twice as much and work twice as hard to gain the same recognition as their male counterparts. Um, And you could see that happening and they don't even know, I think, sometimes that they're doing it. They just have always needed to. And so it's become the norm. A thousand percent, because on top of just proving that we are as good in our day job, right, even though we know it's true, (laughs) the fact that we have to prove it, we're also still lumbered with all of the other additional you know team building activities or you know events that we have to create and all of the culture stuff that is just put on you because it's like oh you must be good at it right because you're female (laughs) (laughs) which is crazy that that still happens isn't it so you came out of this environment and you decided to set up on your own so what were you doing when you were on your own, when you set up this business? What was your idea for what you would do? Yeah. So actually, when I first started, it was it was a little bit foggy. I had to take some time to kind of work out what I, I wanted to do. You know, I knew that I wanted to help women in tech. That was super, super important to me. But it took a little bit of time to figure out what that looked like. And what I started to realize over time was fundamentally throughout the industry, you know, there there is a couple of things that I wanted to help solve. The first thing was I wanted to help close the gender gap because it is, quite frankly, gaping <laughs> in the industry. You know, only 15% of um, tech companies are female founded. Still, we have less than 3% of VC funding wow. uh, for women in tech. Um, so, quite some significant gaps there so I was like well I have some skills here you know I figured out this confidence thing for myself how do I help other people with it so I started more doing doing that side of things in the sort of confidence and leadership side and then what has been happening um, you know more recently is that many women um, are starting to come to me and realize that they also want to either start their own tech companies, build money-making tech solutions and take advantage of that, or also that they have already tech solutions but don't know how to 
grow and scale them. Um, so this is primarily what I'm working on right now. I think it's such a good idea. I have so many people in my world who say, I've got this idea, I want to build this platform for this. Mm -hmm. And they have no idea how to do it. And often what ends up happening is they just use a platform that's already there. And you know how you can kind of put all of your, it's kind of white labeled and and everybody uses the same one. And it doesn't have to be that way because they can actually make their own solution. But it's really hard to know where to start. Like we've thought before of doing an affiliate platform, you know, we're known for doing big affiliate launches and we're always creating in my team different kind of ways to juggle the affiliates and the information that we need and the metrics and all of that. And we've thought before, you know what, we should put this together and sell it because everybody needs it. But we've never done it simply because of what you said. Like, we don't know where to start. And every time I've looked into it, it has always been very male dominated. And Mm -hmm. I always feel like, I'm looked at as, well, you can't have a SaaS platform, like you're female, which is ridiculous, but it feels that way. So I think it's great that you're coming in and showing people they can and showing people exactly what they need to do and how to do it. Because I actually think there's a massive gap there for this um, that you're going to be able to solve. I want to go to the confidence issue. Mm -hmm. because you said that deep down you may have looked confident as a lot of us do and deep down you weren't feeling confident Mm. how did you turn that around yeah well the answer is over time with a lot of work um and I really had to build it from the ground up again you know I think confidence essentially is something to me that comes over time is cultivated based on experience so it's not something that you have immediately you can't just make yourself be confident right the first thing we have to do is be brave in a way and decide that we're going to do everything that we can to change the way we are right now to move into something different and so what I started to do was was think about well what is going on for me right now like how am I feeling like I think that's the first place that anyone needs to start if they're not feeling confident right now and then work out where they want to be in the future I mean like our brains work in strategy right so it's always like current state future state where do we want to be right and then from there look at well what are the tools and the systems that I can put in place to get me there and for me that is things such as and it depends what sort of environment you are in and what the the context is whether it is in, in work or whatever but for me it is genuinely you know a case of putting yourself sometimes just in situations that don't feel comfortable for you and knowing cultivating the belief that no matter what happens you will be okay and you can handle it and I think fundamentally that is how we become more confident and it is it is changing those core beliefs to know that no matter what happens you will be okay and you will handle it and from there you've sort of got yourself a platform that you can build and move forward on. I mean, there are many, many, many different tools and systems to build confidence, but fundamentally you have to have the belief that you can be confident in the first place. I think that's true. And I think a lot of the time when you're faking confidence, and I have done that in the past Mm -hmm. when you kind of like have to just pretend that you're fine and that you can do things even when deep down you're like oh my god I don't know whether this is going to work it's much harder than when you actually believe in yourself and you actually believe that actually this might go wrong it might not work so what like let's give it a go and that uh, the push when when I see people change from the fake confidence to the real confidence I can see it and I can see that they're going to go so far because it makes you take risks and I believe that you have to be quite of a risk taker Mm -hmm. to do anything big in business there has to be that element of risk there because if you're doing something pioneering or you're doing something new or you're doing something a bit bigger then you know the person that does that has to dare for it not to work yeah otherwise they'll never do it and they'll never try it and nothing will ever move forward and nothing will ever progress absolutely a hundred percent I love that you have to dare dare yourself to do it like we're all doing it all of the time and like it's you you have to get to the point where it's you know it's going to be okay 
if you're a bit scared yeah or if it doesn't quite work out like the amount of times that I've done stuff and honestly fallen flat on my face oh, like my <laughs> like just humiliated myself you know like and do you know what it's okay like it doesn't matter yeah, you get back no one else remembers it, yeah. it. <laughs> no no one else ever remembers it I think this is a really big fact that often we don't do things especially online because we're worried about what other people will think of it and that other people might judge us the reality of the situation is it sounds harsh, but no one really cares about you most of the time or what you're doing or whether it's gone well or not. No one's really looking at you because they're too busy on their own stuff. And once you realize that, you care a lot less about what people might think because you feel like all eyes are on you all the time. And the reality is they're just not. Um, let's talk about tech then. So mm-hmm. If there is somebody listening and they're like, you know, what? I've been thinking I want a SaaS platform. I want to build a piece of software that my clients and people like them can use over and over again. What is their first step? Yeah. Well, the first step is always, always to make sure that you are building something is to take a step back. Right. I always say that go. The most important thing here is that we need to go slow to go fast. So, Whenever I work with, and and it doesn't matter who I'm working with, where it, whether it is huge global organizations, right, or a, a founder, a single founder, does not matter. It's the exact same strategy. Take a step back and have a think about what you are actually trying to build here. And the one question that I always, always ask, regardless of the situation, is what is the value that this brings, right? We we always think from a value first perspective because when you do that you will design a solution that meets the needs of your customers meets the needs in the marketplace and all of that good stuff as well so the first thing is to think about what you are building and what problem that it solves very simple business 101 right but then what we also want to think about as well are some of the things such as how will you actually get people onto this platform and how will you keep them there because the most important things with software and this sort of thing is that retaining customers and and to generate that recurring revenue is you need to keep people on the platform. So what often happens is that people will build something, not think about the the growth um, element post-platform build. They just get really excited about building a solution, which is all really good fun. We love that bit as well. But what are you actually going to do with it moving forward? How will you get those customers on? And then what do you want to do with this in the future? Do you want to keep this and manage it as an asset in your own business? Or do you want to sell it in the future? Because that will also inform what you do as a strategy to take this forward. So all of those things come first. Then you think about the tech side of things. And the tech side of things, if you know what you're doing, right, is relatively simple, to be honest, when it comes to SaaS. Like, you just need to understand... How much do you want to scale it? Like, how flexible do you want the solution? Where are you going to put it? And where are you going to host it type situation? I'm, I'm simplifying it a little yeah. bit, but it's because, and I'm doing that because often, specifically, you know, the women that I work with don't go ahead and build something because the tech bit feels so complicated and overwhelming, right? That's one of the big, big issues that we have here, but it's, it's honestly not as scary as you think it is. So start there. I often, I also, you know, I have a full guide to this as well, which I'm sure we can, we can link. Yeah, we'll put it um, in the notes. Yeah, absolutely. Which goes through the 10 things that you need to know before developing your own software platform, which um, covers all of the different elements. That's brilliant. Because I think what a lot of people do is they do what you said. They get excited and they start building, but they haven't thought beyond. Mm. <laughs> they haven't thought about yeah. what they're going to do afterwards, how they're going to, and it can be costly to build a platform that's then never used. Sure can. So it's yeah. really important too. Amazing. Thank you for coming on here today. Um, I love talking women in tech. I think there needs to be more of it. I think it needs to start at school and that's a whole other conversation whole other conversation yeah (laughs) (laughs) everything needs to start earlier but I really really hope to see more female founders who are maybe in business already who have a solution that they can bring out on a platform because then that's how women in tech are made you know people that are already here already using these solutions in their own teams that they could be giving to other people and building out to be bigger. And, and I know you can help with that. So thanks for being here. We will link 
to your free guide. But if somebody is just thinking, right, I need to go and speak right now to Charlotte, where's the best place for them to come to you? So LinkedIn or Instagram, I'm at Charlotte Fuller Tech on both platforms or just drop me an email, info at charlottefuller.com. Super simple. Amazing. Let me know, guys, if you're listening and you are, I say guys, see, that's the thing that I do. (laughs) Very good. Let me know everyone. (laughs) It's something that I've been trying to stop doing and I can't seem to do it because I've been doing it for so long, but I will. Let me know if you're in that strategy group and you're thinking about creating a SaaS platform, creating some tech, go on there and let me know and let me know what you're thinking of doing because I think it's a really interesting conversation that we can all have and we can all inspire each other. Thanks, Charlotte, for being here. Thank you guys for listening as always. And I will be back next week with another episode of Making Money Online. Thank you for listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson. If you'd like to get hold of my guide to launching, go to lisajohnson.com forward slash launch and let's get you making money online.